Hello everyone, this is Dave again. This is my uh, bridge video. It's to give you an idea of what you can do with just the simple QuickTime event uh, elements that we've shown you so far. Um, and uh, it's a good idea to have some idea of what we're working with before we move on to the more advanced features of our QuickTime event system. So one of the most common uses for a QuickTime event is for a boss battle. And what I've done here is I've again got a large trigger near the center of the room, hard to miss. What's going to happen is when the player steps into this trigger, he's going to be teleported to this waypoint right here, and he's going to basically enter a combat sequence with this bird up here in the corner that I've drawn to a very large size. Now, before I get started on this, I want to add a little bit of a disclaimer. <clears throat> I am not in any way, shape, or form an artist, and I'm only an intermediate level uh, designer, and so the purpose of this is not to show off a lot of good art. The purpose of this is not to show off a lot of, uh, of really good matinee uh, sequences or anything like that. Um, the idea is just to give you an idea of what you can do with just the power that I've shown you so far. So let's go ahead and open up the Kismet and I'll give you a little tour of what's going on here. That's the entirety of the Kismet for what you're about to see. It's very simple and very straightforward. Uh, right here, when I step into the trigger, uh, all that I'm doing is storing the player in this named variable because I'm going to be using it all over the place. So I just put it in named variable rather than drawing lines uh, to it from all over the place. And I use that same player to schedule an event. It's going to be uh, 11 seconds. It's a rather long little uh, intro uh, quick time event. The last two seconds will be the success time. You'll be expected to press the up arrow key. Um, if you're <clears throat> it'll prompt you with the with the red arrow, it'll reward you with the gold arrow, it'll be drawn 64 by 64. If you don't know what I'm what I just talked about there, that's because you missed the first two videos on uh, simple quick time events. You need to go back and watch those before you try to watch this because it's going to be rather confusing otherwise. This is just a simple uh, Kismet sequence to create a third person camera. Uh, which is something that we want for our fighting game, and so I just put it in there. And this is just a little death sequence. Uh, it's a remote sequence, so uh, when I when I say I want the player to die, I'll just modify the health by like negative five, no, eight thousand. Well, yeah, it'll definitely kill it. And I stop uh, my matinee. That remote event you can see down here. There's a remote event for stopping the matinee and a remote event for starting the matinee. That's just to keep my stuff nice and clean. Um, they're not used terribly often. But what we're interested in is the quick time event itself. So I already showed you this one, uh, which again is only using our basic functionality. We're not doing any of the advanced functionality yet. That'll come in the next series of videos. The first one is 11 seconds long. The last two seconds of that is your success window. Uh, and again, it's, it's tied to the up arrow key and it is 64 by 64. Something I haven't mentioned yet is, uh, is the reason that there's no position uh, for you to draw the, uh, the image at. And that's because it automatically centers it. Now, if you've been paying close attention, you'll see it's not actually centered on the screen. And that's because the game is currently set up to run at a different resolution than it runs in the editor. Um, and I haven't been able to fi find a good way to actually detect resolution at runtime. I've been looking at blogs and stuff and haven't found a good way. If you know a good way, please post it uh, so I can detect the, uh, the resolution and then actually work on centering all this stuff. But when I play it outside of the editor, uh, it works just fine. Everything is perfectly centered, and that's good enough for me for now. Okay, so the name of this guy was uh, Part 1. So that skips me down here to Part 1 Scheduled Event. Um, on start, I'm just going to toggle the QuickTime event state on. Again, that allows me to use QuickTime event style input. Uh, so it remaps the keys. It also teleports me to a location um, to this particular... Well, to this particular path node right here. Um, and that's because that's where the camera expects me to be in order to include me in the, in the uh, cinematic that's about to happen and I start the matinee. The matinee, uh, I don't want to get into this in too much detail um, because it's not a particularly good matinee, uh, but all that it does is it moves the birds around, uh, the bird around. You can see that uh, that I added a lot of keyframes trying to get it to have some nice smooth movement. Uh, it was relatively successful, but it's not certainly not great. Um, and I animate the bird so he flaps his wings and then glides and then flaps his wing and then glides, etc. And I move the camera around uh, in order to keep the bird and the player in view as much as possible and to add dramatic effect. So anyway, at the beginning of the first cutscene, I turn on my QTE state, I teleport to the right location, and I start the matinee.
I don't need to do anything in the general end case, uh, and that's because I'm doing separate things in the success case and in the failure case. Uh, I'm not using window open on any of these uh, quick time events, um, but there is a lot that you could do on window open. I'm just not using them right here. So should I succeed in this quick time event? And that means uh, pressing the up arrow during the last two seconds of the 11 second sequence. Um, I'm just going to output to the screen, first event succeeded, that's really just a debug. I should, I should probably go ahead and take that out now, because it'll be obvious whether or not I've passed it. And then I'm going to schedule the second event. Should I fail, I'm going to call the player death uh, remote event, which is what I showed you over here. Um, and you're going to see this quite a bit, because this is, uh, this is what I do on any of the quick time events when I die, is I just kill him. So you're going to see that call a few more times. So, what is this uh, second event like? Well, it's called part two, and so that'll send us down to this event right here, but it's called part two, uh, no delay, five seconds with a two second window, so we're not making it any harder. Um, there, you're supposed to press the down arrow for this particular one, and I've tied that to the red arrow prompt and the gold arrow success. Again, 64 by 64, I don't think in a quick time event you really want to be changing the size of that. I think you want to stick with one size, and so that's what I did. And should I fail, I die. Once again, there is, uh, there's nothing to, nothing needs to be done with end or with window open, and this is actually the most complicated of the four quick time events. So let's take a look at part two now, which again is five seconds long with a two second success window. Here, I don't have to do anything on start because I've, I'm already in QTE state. I've already been teleported to the right location and the matinee is already running. So there's nothing to do on start. There's nothing to do in the general end. There's nothing to do in window open. All I have to do is, should I succeed with this second event, um, I'll output to the screen, second event succeeded, which again, I probably shouldn't be doing. I could just take that out. <clears throat> And I will call part three. You can see that's called part three right there. Should I fail with the quick time event, I will uh, call player death, which I showed you just a second ago. So let's take a look at part three. Part three is eight seconds long with a two second window. The success key is left. The prompt uh, material is the red left arrow. The success uh, material is the left gold arrow. And again, it's 64 by 64. No big deal. All right. So this is an eight second long as opposed to the 11 seconds and the five seconds. Um, and the reason for these different times, as you'll see, is different parts of the sequence are longer than other parts of the sequence uh, within matinee. And so those are tied to those. Okay, so uh, what happens on three? Well, the, what happens on three is exactly is actually very similar to what happened in two. Instead of saying second event succeeded, I'll say third event succeeded. Instead of launching part three, I will launch part four. No big surprise there. And should I fail, I die. So this is extremely similar. The timing just happens to be uh, seven seconds, again, with a two second window. That Lowering that window makes it harder. Uh, if I were doing difficulty levels, I'd probably make those variable inputs. Now, uh, the success key for part four is actually the right key. Um, and again, it uses the right, the red right arrow and the gold right arrow. And again, it's 64 by 64. Uh, the fourth and final part of the cutscene is a little bit different. Um, on success, I'm just going to output fourth event succeeded. There's no need to call another event. Um, in fact, if I went back to the first one, I'd end up in an infinite loop, so I don't really want to do that at all. Uh, should I fail? I'm still just going to die. But regardless of whether I succeeded or failed, when it's over, so from end, I'm just going to turn off the, uh, the toggle QTE state, which is going to allow my player to move around again. Now, you'll notice that in this particular demo, I completely failed to tie the camera back to where it was originally, um, and so it's not going to look good when I walk around, but at least I'll be able to walk around. And, uh, of course, you can imagine just put, tying that camera back to where it goes. So let's take a look at our demo here. And uh, just remember again that this is not meant to be an overly dramatic, uh, good cinematic. This is just a demo to show you that the uh, that the kismet works. You can see I'm in third person now. That's because that little bit of kismet code that I put towards the top. Um, it's not meant to actually work with aiming and stuff like that. Although I could have done that. That just wasn't my uh, wasn't my focus. So I'm going to step into the trigger, and what you're going to see is the uh, the bird is going to approach. I'm going to spin the camera around here. This is all in the in the matinee. There's my prompt, and I did succeed. I'm going to go ahead and fail the second one, and you can see it kills me, okay? 
I know, exciting stuff. Now I could have just uh, I could have killed myself and then respawned myself and gone back uh, to the first one. So I could have just gone straight back up here to the schedule event and I could have done it again. That's just not how I chose to run this particular game. So let's walk up there again. You'll see the exact same kismet happen again. And you'll see the red up arrow, which will be replaced by the gold uh, up arrow when I succeed. And I'll go ahead and succeed on this one as well this time. I did not animate the player. Obviously, I could have done that as well. But that just wasn't necessary for the demo. Bird flies around to a different angle and attacks me again. And his fourth and final attack, his sort of ultimate attack that ends up killing him. There you go. Dead bird. And uh, that's a really basic quick time event, but it's pretty representative of what quick time events do in general. Um, let's see, is there anything else I should show you here? Let's go ahead and, uh, since I have a few more minutes in this video, let's change all of these two second windows to one second windows. And you'll see that that will add <coughs> a significant amount of, de of, uh, of difficulty. So this could be used for more advanced players or just to make a more difficult sequence. Generally, the shorter the sequence is, um, the more difficult you want to make it. But there you go. That gives you an idea. And... Uh, he flies around again, and that timing is a little bit off, but that's just a design issue. It's no big deal. And I'll hit the right arrow here to live, and the bird dies again. So that's what it looks like with one second success windows. Oh, yeah, and quick time event mode is off. And like I said, I completely forgot to tie that camera back to the, back to the player's ankle. Um, so that's why everything looks so funky there. Now my camera's completely off screen, but... There you go. Thank you for watching this video. Um, if you've watched the first two uh, parts of the simple quick time event, I highly recommend that from here you watch the advanced quick time event videos, uh, which will show you how to use some of these uh, some of these inputs that we haven't used yet. Instead of just having one thing in the list, we'll put multiple things in the list, and uh, we'll also use x gap, randomize, and sequence size. Thank you very much.